All right, thanks. My name is Glenn Nowak. I'm from Las Vegas. I um, mean, I thought when I saw the call for papers, um, I had to bring a perspective on some of the scenes that uh, I sort of knew we would all see last night, and I take it we'll see a little more of it throughout today's conference. Um, I teach in the Hospitality Design Concentration at UNLV, which is just a few blocks from the Strip, where uh, students learn uh, either the easy way or the hard way how to make sense uh, of one of the most unique built environments on Earth. And I wanted to bring uh, a little bit of both education and entertainment today. Um, so if you entertain me, I will uh, deliver this in three parts. A short poem, a short story, and a little photo essay. Signs are the masks our buildings wear. They make us say, I want to go there. Yet in Las Vegas, there is more to it. And Betty Willis of the welcome sign knew it. Fabulously lit, marking the start of the strip. Not selling a thing, but wishing all a good trip. A sign that echoes a broader context is one that will be there the year after next. From Googie to postmodern, to wherever we're at. Relevancy requires a little bit of all of that. Signs are the masks our buildings wear. They make us say, I want to go there. Venturi, Eisenhower, and Denise Scott Brown learned more than a little from this big old town. We now know the difference between a duck and a decorated shed. We have Noli maps and the physiognomy of signs stuck in our head, and you know, the death of architecture, according to Hugo. Signs are the masks our buildings wear. They make us say, I want to go there. For decades, the mantra was bigger is better, with automobiles the size of each letter. Signs were more fantastic than the buildings at night, energizing the street, sidewalk, and site. Architectural implications trickled down to the marquee, while mega resorts ballooned to the size of the city. Though the truth set in with the heat by day as sunlight washed the facades away. Signs are the masks our buildings wear. They make us say, I want to go there. Tourists understood these reality checks. They came for the experience and appreciated the architects. But ultimately, the brick and the mortar were there to support Vegas Vic and the performer. James Wines once told me, Gettysburg is fake real, and Las Vegas is real fake. And I thought, between the past and the future, I know which one I'll take. Which brings us to win in this city of sin. The building is the sign, and the sign is his signature bringing the semblance of authenticity in, yet before the encore, the overture. Digital screens, social media, and giant robotics turn roadside billboards into high-level semiotics. Dinner and a show and your reaction to it can be aestheticized in real time for all to view it. Hi, out there. A good sign was once some flashing lights, a timeless font, that neon look. Now it's animation, high def, constantly updated like the feed on your Facebook. And maybe a few rhymes. It is a sign of the times. Thank you. <laughs> and now uh, a short story. Um, I'll try to keep it short. Um, about a sign, it's a signs about signs. This is on the welcome to fabulous Las Vegas, a sign which is reinterpreted in everything from plumbing, uh, plumbing companies to gun ranges to real estate firms and the university I call home. How association through proximity has perpetuated a sense of pride and pretense that everything is fabulous. Once upon a time, there was a little sign 
placed on Las Vegas Boulevard. Welcome to fabulous Las Vegas. Even though this sign is outside of city limits in the unincorporated township of Paradise, Nevada. It was borrowed, bastardized, and bedazzled. It was placed within city limits because downtown Las Vegas wanted its welcome sign too. And it's placed at various uh, entry points to the city. Welcome to fabulous Las Vegas if you happen to enter from Henderson, Nevada. Welcome to fabulous Hyundai, the collision center. A sign on a sign. Welcome to the boot barn. I brought my Las Vegas disco ball shoes today. Welcome to the fabulous gun range. To the best price lawyers. And as was mentioned just last night, a lot of the signs and even a lot of the architecture, not just in Las Vegas, but around the world, becomes a little cliche. 1% is the real deal. 99 is an imitation. And the sign has been reinterpreted. Our fabulous phone book, our fabulous film office, our fabulous pest control, <laughs> our fabulous suburbs, our fabulous downtowns. This one confused me. I didn't know what the institute was. The Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, fabulous institute. Window cleaning. We had your traditional sign along the bottom edge, but things always are striving to be more fabulous. There can be subtle variations, but there are many haters when it comes to changing the familiar in the name of creativity. This is our new logo. I'm a fan. Not very many others are. If you have to explain it, it didn't work, says this Twitter, Twitter follower. And this summer, I was in Dewey Beach, Delaware. The impact of things that crop up in Las Vegas have a way of finding themselves not only across the entire U.S., but around the world. It's informed the spectacular slash fabulous signs, MGM, Paris, Treasure Island. The sign here is minimally changed, echoing the investment of the rest of the property throughout multiple changes in ownership throughout the recession. The sign stays and the message subtly changes. But in Wynn's case, the sign echoes a much more integrated approach. The sign promises an amazing experience by demonstrating a glimpse of it. It promises with the owner's signature. And the signature is the sign. The sign mimics the mass of the building. Welcome to Wynn. The building reinforces the sign. Welcome to Encore. It's again a sign blown up to the size of a high rise. Welcome to Win Boston. I mean, Win Boston. Welcome to Win Macau. The little sign appreciates all the love and all of the influence that it has had, but it has gotten, as it has gotten older, it has learned that there are better takeaways than its fame or its form. Through its renewed mission, which includes running on solar power and supporting local charities by selling its cast-off light bulbs, the sign's functions behind the scenes may serve as examples for more Las Vegas hospitality design and architecture at large to simultaneously address issues of environmental and social sustainability and support a more fabulously flourishing future. Welcome to fabulous, solar-powered Las Vegas. 
And then in the last few minutes, I wanted to uh, uh, reflect on something that uh, it'll be less than five minutes. <laughs> That'll bring us uh, a little more into the future <clears throat> with the assertion that signs are the mirrors into which our cultures are reflected. This is on the challenges of paying respects to the neon of yesterday and paying admission to do it. In a city of some of the largest and most recognizable signs in the world, a critical practice of preservation and restoration is changing perceptions of the past and influencing thoughts about the future. The Las Vegas Neon Museum, or as it has been affectionately referred to as the Neon Boneyard or the Neon Graveyard, presents one of the most comprehensive glimpses into the past of Las Vegas's imploded architecture. I highly recommend it for everybody here. Please forgive the morbidity of this analogy with the neon graveyard, but consider when the unfortunate time comes, who is really going to want to inherit all of your stuff or your parents' stuff? The furniture, the outdated electronics, the TVs, the speakers, the iPhones, but especially those big screen TVs. This makes me think about how our future histories may or may not be cherished. The stuff we are building now, retail architecture, signage. It was recently announced that the Neon Museum will acquire the famous Hard Rock uh, Gibson sign, perhaps even the Fender Stratocaster. And it made me think, what are they going to replace this with? Obviously something much more spectacular and fabulous. So as the neon era and craftsmanship of physical signage yields to high-def video screens, what will be worth keeping in five to 10 years when the 200,000 pixel sign dies? Studies by past students, these are just a sample of some taken only 10 years ago, um, which analyzed the sign typologies through Las Vegas. They deal with things like formal classifications, qualitative analysis of uh, the sign's performance through day and night, its leg legibility, 2D versus 3D. Many of these conveyed the same message year after year, and in some cases, for decades. When presented with major shifts in the predominant form of signage, just 10 years later, these videos were taken by a student just uh, last week. New issues are brought to the fore. Relationships between object and message are often minimal or non-existent. It is now imperative that analysis be conducted through time-based methods. The number of videos loaded into a sign, the duration of each video, the frequency of video rotations, sound integration, auxiliary light synchronization, and more. Are all, to be are all to be measured with reference to the capacity of the sign's various audiences to assimilate, if not care for, the attempted messaging. One thing is for sure, just as the Welcome to Las Vegas sign can be found in its various reincarnations almost everywhere, these are signs of where many cities are going, and I can't wait to visit. Thank you, University of Iowa. Thank you for the uh, conference. Appreciate it.